What's up, everyone, and welcome to Ben's Car Reviews. I'm Ben, and today we'll be dissecting the 2024 Honda Ridgeline. Let's get right into it with the chart. Four different trim options when picking your 2024 Ridgeline, Sport, RTL, Trail Sport, and Black Edition. That Sport will start you off at just under 40 k That Black Edition will round you out just over 46 k so across these trims, about $7,000 difference. Hopefully, there's a Ridgeline in this lineup that works for you, gives you what you want. Looking at the engine, now I don't have to pick between many of them because there's only one 3.5 liter v6 280 horsepower 262 pound feet of torque a little underpowered if you ask me i would have liked to see that horsepower number closer to 300 but that's just kind of splitting hairs this will definitely be able to get out of its own way and that'll be paired up with a nice smooth nine speed automatic transmission and you'll get a great all-wheel drive system as well on all these trims great to see that absolutely necessary for these price points and for the kind of vehicle this is MPGs aren't horrible for the big V6. You'll get 18 in the city, 24 on the highway. Real quick, guys, here at Ben's Car Reviews. I strive to bring the most accurate, relevant information under 10 minutes. There's no misleading and no wasted time. If that's something that's intriguing to you and you like this content as you watch, please like and subscribe so I can continue to grow the channel. Let's keep going. Let's look at all the pictures released by Honda and what we learn about this thing. If you're active in the automobile world, or specifically the truck world, you know there's a lot of mixed feelings when it comes to this Ridgeline and whether it's a truck or not. If we're calling other vehicles with beds trucks, then this is indeed also a truck. This is a unibody, however, not many on the market right now, and this is certainly the largest given the others are the Hyundai Santa Cruz and the Ford Maverick. I do like this design overall. It's taken me a little while to completely be on board with it, but I'm seeing the vision now, and I would buy this Ridgeline. You get a strut front suspension and a multi-link rear suspension. The Trail Sport even gets you an off-road tuned suspension, as that is the off-road themed trim. 18-inch wheels on all trims, but a variety of designs and finishes. I don't find the looks particularly stunning, but I think they look good enough. Tires are 245 on the width with a 60 series sidewall, and you'll get all seasons on all the trims, but the Trail Sport will get you an all-terrain. And beautifully, and I'm so thrilled to say this, you get a spare tire. Yes, absolutely nuts, but you'll get one. All trims get LEDs all around, including fog lights, and you also have bed lights, dual action tailgate, lockable in-bed trunk, dual chrome exhaust tips, class 3 tow hitch with a 7-pin connector. Once again, those are on all the trims. Tons of packages available on the Ridgeline. These include the Adventure Package, All Season Protection Packages 1 and 2, Cargo Storage Package, Outdoors Essential Packages 1 and 2, Protection Package, and Rugged Utility Package. Ranging in price from $290 to $4,400 and adding features from splash guards to floor mats to roof rails to fenders and more. You get a 5,000 pound towing capacity in this with a max payload of 1,580 pounds and it weighs just over 6,000 pounds. Measurement wise, the bed is going to be 64 inches long and 50 inches wide on all trims. The wheelbase is 125 inches, ground clearance is 7.6 inches. The length of this ridge line will be 210 inches and the height is 70.8. So certainly not huge, but I think this is the right balance for most people who want some truck capability. Although, you know, at these price points, uh, this is, you know, technically a mid-sized truck, but others might be more in your area if you're paying this much anyway. But there's clearly a lot to like here if you're wanting some moderate truck capability. And, you know, having the bed be 64 inches long means you still are going to have that capability compared to the compact trucks, which are just about four feet. Picking the best bang for your buck, I'm going with the RTL. Going up the couple thousand from the Sport gets you a good amount more interior standard features and some elevated exterior uh, looks and features as well. The powertrain is the same on all trims as well as the all-wheel drive, so there's no decision to make between uh, that for the trims. So it really boils down to exterior looks, interior standard features, and any extra amenities you may want. Given the Sport uh, trim offers all the packages as the rest, going there and optioning up may be a good route for someone as well. Looking inside now, first glance at this interior sparks a mediocre reaction. I think it's nice, but nothing spectacular. The top trim definitely brings some glam and adds some extra attraction to the mix. This is a five-seater, and you get storage under the rear bench. 109 cubic feet of interior space total. There's a 60-40 split in the rear that allows for items up to four feet tall to stand in the back, so that's a nice touch. You get a nine-inch full-color infotainment touchscreen on all trims. Wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto capability. 7 inch driver's, inf uh, driver's information cluster on all trims, 7 speaker audio system on the base 3 trims, and you'll get an 8 speaker on the Black Edition. Trail Sport and the Black Edition get a wireless charger, 
orange ambient interior lighting in the Trail Sport and red in the Black Edition and a powder moonroof on all the top three trims. You get Tri-Zone automatic climate control system with humidity control and air filtration on all trims. A leather wrap steering wheel on the top three trims with the Trail Sport getting orange stitching and the Black Edition getting red. HTL and Trail Sport tack on heated front seats and our leather trimmed the Black Edition adds heated rear outboard and ventilated front seats. The top three, th three trims will get a driver's seat with 10-way power adjustment, including power lumbar support and two-position memories. You'll get four mats on all trims, and the Trail Sport has a unique all-season mat. Uh, Honda Sensing driver's assist technology offers a host of features to keep you safe and comfortable. Overall, I think Honda is offering a solid interior here and a suite of standard features per trim level. I just think the design is a bit too basic to compete with the rest of the trucks in this market, considering how much interiors and trucks are now prioritized and the designs are getting far more in depth. Interview guys, if you're liking this bridge line, you're looking to buy one heading into 2024 and you want to check out the competitors as well, you know, certainly this is going to be competing with the mid-sized trucks. You know, the famous ones, obviously the big, big competitors, the Colorado Canyon, Frontier, Ranger, Gladiator, they're all offering, <clears throat> you know, similar to what this is, um, essentially with just truck capability. Granted, there's all different levels of, you know, performance, off-road capability, you know, but if you're looking for just basic trunk, uh, truck functionality, you know, there's a lot of competition out there. Granted, these price points are high. Base trim is nearly 40K. Uh, if you look across these other brands, they're offering multiple trims for less in some cases. Um, certainly their work level truck is going to be less than that. Um, so definitely take your time, look around, test drive, see what you like. Design wise, you know, I'm not going to rank this one at the top compared to those, um, but I definitely don't think it's the worst compared to those. So it kind of falls in the middle. Um, interior as well, it's all up for interpretation, all up for your opinion. So check out all the options, see what you like, and hopefully you can find a mid-sized truck that you like. Hopefully this video leaked out in a clear way for you guys. Thank you for watching this Ben's Car Review. Please subscribe if not already. If you have an idea for a future review, drop in the comments and I'll see what I can do. If you'd like to become a member of the channel, I have that option now. Check that out and join if you'd like. And I'll catch you on the next Ben's Car Review.